so a very good afternoon to all of you today i am here with you and today there is lecture number 14 and this lecture 14 is continuation part of the lecture 13 and you see in your lecture number 13 we are discussed about the nuclear power station in that nuclear power station uh, we were discussed how nuclear power station can work and you seen in case of a nuclear power plant what will happen uh, your uh, you can say that your fuel energy nuclear fuel energy is basically converted into the electrical energy and uh, after that this electrical energy we can use for our uh, various household activities Uh, you were discussed about uh, what will be happen in case of a nuclear power plant and uh, i was discussed with you people that in case of a nuclear power plant uh, the most important component of the nuclear power plant is basically the nuclear reactor so in case of a nuclear reactor uh, nuclear fission process will take place and when that fission process will take place then the nuclear energy of the radioactive element like uranium is converted into the heat energy and then this heat energy can be used to basically evaporate or boils the water and this water becomes a steam and then high pressure steam is strikes to the steam turbine and uh, the steam turbine starts rotating and when the turbine is coupled with an alternator and hence what will happen the alternator will start producing electricity so this is the all about you can say that your total line principle of your nuclear power plant i had already explained to you in my previous lecture that the nuclear power plant has a certain disadvantage and most of the most important disadvantage of the nuclear power plant that it required a lot of lot of space as well as the initial investment for raising the plant for erection of the plant is very very high because as we know in case of a nuclear power plant we are using a nuclear fuel and this nuclear fuel is basically the radioactive in nature so uh, these type of power plants are basically installed in a area which are away from populated area and second thing as uh, this nuclear power uh, nuclear we can say that uh, nuclear fuel that can be used to convert the electricity the one of the most and most thing that will happen after the nuclear fuel is burnt or you can say that the process will be uh, out then the main thing behind is that thing to the safe disposal of the fuel that we can use for production of the electricity now uh, we are we discussed about the advantages we are discussed about the disadvantages now today uh, we are discussed about a nuclear uh, power plant what will happen in case of nuclear power plant that we have already explained to you but now today we will discuss about the schematic diagram of this nuclear power plant now you can see uh, in this picture or a slide we have a nuclear power plant and this in this nuclear power plant you can see there is a term that is a called as a nuclear reactor and in this nuclear reactor uh, basically the nuclear fission process will take place now uh, all the fission processes that we can use uranium as a nuclear fuel in order to produce uh, the nuclear energy and after that this nuclear energy can be used to boil the water or you can say that your um, get water converted into the steam this will be all happen in this case of a nuclear reactor now you can see this from nuclear reactor there is a filter or there is a pump and we have a cold water and this cold water will coming from this heat exchanger and you can see that the water is always coming from the turbine after the gas will be evacuated then we have a condenser and we have a cooling tower so you can say that what will happen in case of a nuclear power plant the nuclear fuel that is a uranium that we can use is going under the process of the nuclear fission process and when the fission process will take place uh, it uh, produces a lot of heat so this heat can be used to evaporate or boil the water and then when this water will be converted into the steam the high pressure steam is then strike to the turbine and when the turbine starts rotating you can see here the turbine is coupled with an alternator and this alternator will start producing electricity and after that we are using a transformer we are using isolator and these are called as the buses so here the heat can sorry the electricity can be transmitted to the uh, grid station or something distribution 
so you can see uh, in case of a nuclear power plant there are basically the four most important stages or the four most important component and these are number one is called as the nuclear reactor number two is called as the heat exchanger number three is called as the steam turbine and number fourth is called as the alternate now uh, in case of a nuclear reactor nuclear fission process will take place the nuclear uh, you can say that energy stored in radioactive element is converted into the heat energy in heat exchanger process uh, the high pressure steam it get it heated and uh, after that this high pressure steam is then spiked to the steam turbine now in case of a steam turbine the steam turbine starts rotating and in case of an alternator the alternator starts rotating and according to the principle of uh, electricity generation whenever there is change in the magnetic flux and emf is induced so by the means of this thing you can say that your uh, electricity will be generated in case of a nuclear power plant now one of the most important thing here you have to discuss is that after striking the uh, steam to the steam turbine the pressure get reduced so this low pressure steam is passed to the condenser and here this condenser condense the steam and this is again converted into the water and this water is again fitted with the help of this feed water pump to the heat exchanger so this process will go on simultaneously goes on simultaneously to and fro process will go on further in a heat exchanger the water is also taken from some river with the help of some cooling tower and after that again this water is fed to the heat exchanger so this process will be goes on uh, continuously the process will goes on fission production will take place in nuclear reactor but uh, one of the most important thing that thing this nuclear fission process is basically a chain is basically a controlled process so if it is uncontrolled process then a chain reaction will take place and it will generate a lot of uh, energy and this energy can bundled in nature that we can't control it so in case of a nuclear reactor the chain reaction will take place so that it can slow down the nuclear energy so that is why we are using here some coolant is there some refrigerant is there so that it can be controlled the chain reaction that will take place in the nuclear reactor clear so up till stage anybody having any doubt he or she can ask me or otherwise i will start continuing it so shall i continue or anybody having any doubt yeah i'm waiting for your response shall i continue or anybody having any doubt no sir no sir you can continue okay okay so uh, if you say uh, as i had already told you that the parts of the nuclear power plant that we have already discussed with you that is there are four main parts of the nuclear power plant that is a called as the nuclear reactor uh, the heat exchanger the steam turbine and the alternator and all these four points i had discussed with you uh, before that what will be happening in case of every plant so it is understood to all of you now uh, you can see this is the pictorial view or this is the pictures of some nuclear reactor see this is uh, the first picture shows like a, a schematic diagram here you can see it is a nuclear reactor and one of the most and most important thing to understand here that nuclear reactor is placed inside the earth it will be depth inside the earth a few a few meters inside the earth the nuclear reactor will be formed so that if there will be some chances of a leakage of this radioactive rays so it will be inside the earth it will be not exposed to the atmosphere because if the nuclear reactor if, if the radioactive radioactive rays are exposed to the environment it will cause a great effect or threat to the environment so in order to avoid these thing this nuclear reactor will be placed inside the earth now this is the this diagram or this uh, second picture is basically shows the real nuclear power plant reactor now when you can see in this is the closed cylindrical vessel now in this closed cylindrical vessel we have this nuclear uh, reactor will be installed and here all the nuclear fission processes will take place and this in this nuclear reactor your nuclear energy is converted into the heat energy so that the water will evaporate and it will become as a steam clear now if you see uh, this is a second picture diagram and this is the picture diagram for the heat exchanger now again you have this heat exchanger and this heat exchanger is basically in addition with the nuclear reactor so we have a charge tubes we have a control rod radiation sensing 
pressure valves graphite rod moderator then the fuel rod so between the fuel rods and we have uh, some moderator rods is also inserted fuel rods are basically the radioactive element that is the uranium and the moderator is basically in order to slow down the nuclear fission energy and after that you can see we have a hot gas duct steam heat exchanger and all this so again this is the second diagram will be the pictorial representation where this is the actual steam uh, heat exchanger in case of a nuclear power plant so this is this is somehow look like a heat exchanger that we can use in case of a nuclear power plant now the third thing that i had told you that is the third important thing is the steam turbine so this is look like a steam turbine this is the two photographs that i have taken from the google to show you that how looks like a steam turbine so after the heat energy or after the steam that will be driven inside the heat exchanger this high pressure steam is then strive to rotate the this steam turbine and after that this steam turbine will start rotating and when the steam turbine will start rotating uh the uh, you can say that the heat energy is converted into the mechanical energy and then this mechanical energy will be available at the shaft and then this shaft is basically or a steam turbine is coupling with the alternator and after that the alternator will start producing electricity so this is the picture showing the steam turbines how the steam turbines look like okay before uh going to further there is a one important uh, thing that we have already discussed in case of hydroelectric power plant in case of thermal power plant and the same thing will be happen in case of a nuclear power plant and this is called as the selection of a site uh, you can uh, you can get an idea that where this type of nuclear power plant can be installed uh, so while erecting or installing a particular nuclear power plant what are the various factors that should be kept in mind or kept in consideration while installing while erecting a particular nuclear power plant and these are the four important terms that is availability of the water that means you see in case of a nuclear power plant uh, the uranium or a nuclear fuel can be used to simply evaporate or boil the water so you are required abundant amount of water so when you select a particular site for the nuclear power plant that nuclear power plant will be located in such a way uh, that there will be nearby uh, some artificial process of the water will be there or some natural process will be there so something like a lake or a river should be adjacent to this nuclear power plant so where you can say that uh, the nuclear power plant are installed in a particular area where the availability of the water is available second uh, as i had already told you that after the nuclear fission process will goes on and this nuclear uh, fuel that is a uranium is highly radioactive in nature so after the you can say that when this uh, nuclear fission reaction will take place so there is a complete disposal of the nuclear power plant as you have already uh, explained in thermal power plant then uh, in case of thermal power plant when the coal is burnt the by products of the coal is obtained that is called as the ash and we are having an ash handling plant and in case of a ash handling plant we can store the ash in ash handling plant and after that this ash will be used in some building material concrete material type like thing but here in case of a nuclear fuel uh, when the nuclear fuel can be used in order to generate the electricity so there is a disposal of nuclear fuel is required so this nuclear fuel that you can dispose of that cannot affect any human being that does not affect any environment so there is a proper disposal of this waste or you can say the disposal of this nuclear fuel can be required number 3 uh, as i have already told you that this nuclear power plant will generate electricity not out in large quantity but uh, where we are use a uh, nuclear fuel and this nuclear fuel is very very dangerous to our human being because it contains certain radioactive elements so uh, these type of nuclear power plants are basically installed in a place where which are be distant from the populated area and last will be uh, you are having a transportation transportation facility that means the transportation facility will be very very enriched or a good in order to select the size of the nuclear power plant so this is all about you can say that the nuclear power plant site specification so up till anybody having any doubt or shall i continue next yes sir okay continue okay so the last point that i had discussed with you is the efficiency part now the efficiency of the nuclear power plant is determined similarly other to the other heat engineers 
since uh, technically the plant is a large heat engine the amount of electricity or electrical power produced for each unit of thermal power gives the plant its thermal efficiency and according to the second law of thermodynamics there is an upper limit how efficient these plants can be so you can say that these type of nuclear power plants are basically uh, efficiency near about 33 to 37 percent comparable to the fossil fuel so higher temperature and more than modern design like the generation of nuclear reactor could potentially reach the 45 percent efficiency that means these type of nuclear power plant are not so much efficient the efficiency of the nuclear power plant is lies about 45 percent clear but uh, i can tell you one thing in case of this nuclear power plant that uh, in case of a nuclear power plant for the generation of electricity a very small amount of nuclear fuel is required as compared to the thermal power plant so if you compare a thermal power plant with a nuclear power plant in case of a thermal power plant you required a large amount of uh, you can say that fuel in order to generate the electricity but in case of a uh, nuclear power plant you are required a fuel but the quantity of the fuel required is very very low because we know uh, the nuclear fuel that is uranium thorium these are all the radioactive element and these these uh, radioactive element can generate a lot of amount of energy but only the distance only the thing is that thing we have to uh, get the energy by fission process or the fusion process so once the fission process will take place the chain reaction will involved so when the chain reaction will involved it will generate a lot of uh, energy so you can say that for the generation of electricity to thermal power plant your fuel required is very very high but in case of a nuclear power plant the fuel required is very very low as compared to this thing so if we talk about the efficiency to efficiency of the nuclear power plant lies in between you can say that 30 37 33 or 45% clear anybody having any doubt no anybody? sir okay so this is the last slide that i have discussed with you that is a live working of the nuclear power plant so again in this slide there is a small video for you people so after getting a knowledge about nuclear power plant you can see how the nuclear power plant can work so again i request to all the participants to be there please watch this video carefully you can get an idea that how this nuclear power plant can work this is darlington on the shores of lake ontario about 70 kilometers east of toronto it's one of a Aerial power generations to nuclear gener generating stations. And it's basically a factory for making lots of electricity, enough to power a city of around 2 million people. That's about 20% of Ontario's electricity needs. The building is divided into two main areas along its length. The nuclear side with the reactors and the conventional side with the turbine generators that make the electricity there are four generating units at darlington units 1 to 4 each with a reactor and a turbine generator each unit can generate 935 megawatts of electricity Darlington produces electricity using the heat that comes from splitting uranium atoms in a process called nuclear fission. The fuel is naturally occurring uranium that's processed into small pellets. The pellets are sealed into metal tubes which are welded together to form a fuel bundle. The fuel bundles are then inserted into a large tank called the calandria, which is the heart of the nuclear reactor. and do reactors a special kind of water called heavy water flows around the fuel bundles heavy water is found in all water rivers lakes and oceans on average one out of every 7000 drops of water is heavy water it's 10% heavier than ordinary water because it incorporates a heavy form of hydrogen called deuterium
The heavy water slows down tiny particles called neutrons, so they are more likely to hit and split the uranium atoms. A chain reaction of splitting atoms releases tremendous heat into the heavy water. The heated heavy water flows through a closed loop system that's pumped through the reactor to a set of steam generators where it transfers the heat to ordinary water. When that water boils, it turns into steam. The steam is transported at high pressure through pipes to a large turbine where it pushes the blades and turns a shaft connected to a rotor in the generator, causing the rotor to spin. The spinning rotor is a large electromagnet that produces rotating magnetic fields. These fields move across coils of copper wire in the generator, producing electricity. The electricity is fed into transmission lines that carry the power from Darlington to people's homes and businesses. All used fuel is carefully stored in safe and secure areas that are constantly monitored by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission and the International Atomic Energy Agency. So let's take a tour of Darlington. Before going into the station, everyone has to pass through a security building that operates a lot like an airport security system. There are machines to check for explosive chemicals, X-ray machines, and detectors. Then everyone has to pass through a turnstile where their security card and their individual hand bone structure must match. At all times, highly trained security staff inspect every person and everything entering and leaving the station. Then, all personnel pick up devices that are issued to them to constantly monitor for radiation while inside the station. Safety is the number one priority at all Ontario power generation facilities, so everyone working in the station must have the proper protective equipment. Safety glasses, hard hats, safety boots, gloves, and hearing protection. Visitors must also wear safety equipment. The main entry for the station is through an area known as Unit Zero. This is where the common systems for the entire station are located. Heating, lighting, ventilation, and the operations control room. Located in Unit Zero are the mechanical maintenance shop, experts in welding, machining, and pipe fitting work on equipment. The control maintenance shop for the experts in electrical, instrumentation, and electronic systems. And stores, where people pick up the tools and parts they need to do their job. The station is divided into zones according to the location of systems and equipment to prevent the transfer of radioactive materials. Whenever people or equipment move from zone to zone, they monitor to ensure no transfer of radioactivity. Let's start at the beginning of the fission process where heat is released from the fuel. Each of the four reactor buildings is made of heavily reinforced concrete with external walls two meters thick. When a reactor is operating, no one can enter the reactor vault, but when it's shut down for maintenance, radiation fields decrease and trained staff can safely work here. Technicians put on protective equipment, log in with their tools, and then access the reactor through the airlock system. The reactor consists of a large, heavily shielded vessel, or calandria, which contains 480 fuel channels and 6,240 bundles of uranium fuel. When 
now looking down on the top of the reactor valve. The process of nuclear fission draws the heat from the fuel to boil ordinary water into steam. That steam is transferred over to the turbine side of the station through large steam lines. So this is the turbine hall. It's almost four football fields long and 19 stories high. All four turbine generating units are located in this one giant area. You can see the color coding. Unit one is red. Unit two is yellow. Unit three is green. And unit four is purple. This color coding extends all the way through the systems for the unit and into the control room. Since all four generating units are identical, the color coding ensures correct unit and system identification. The turbine blades are shaped like a fan, where steam enters and turns the blades. In the center is a connecting shaft that rotates at 1,800 times a minute as the steam pushes the blades. At the very end is a relatively small piece of equipment, the actual generator where the electricity is made. From here, it's out to the grid and into homes and businesses. So I think uh, this... So finally, we come back to Unit Zero and the control room. Mission control for the whole station. Every important system in the plant is monitored and controlled from this room by highly trained and certified staff. Authorized nuclear operators go through an average of eight years of high level training and testing to become fully certified by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. All Darlington staff are lifelong learners and spend up to 20% of their time in continual safety and job training. OPG nuclear generating stations use the defense in depth safety philosophy that sets the highest standards for plant design and operations. For critical components and systems, backup devices ensure redundancy at all times, as well as fast acting shutdown systems. There is a secondary containment structure called the vacuum building. This 71 meter high, 24 story cylindrical concrete structure is connected to the reactor buildings by a pressure relief duct and is a unique safety feature of the can do system. inside the massive machine that is the Darlington Nuclear Generating Station. But ultimately, that's not what makes the power. It takes people. Over 2,500 highly trained and skilled staff work at Darlington. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Supplying the homes and businesses of Ontario with safe, reliable, clean electricity. So this is all about the video that you can see how live working of this nuclear power plant take place. So are you get an idea after watching this video how this nuclear power plant actually work? You can see the nuclear reactor, how a person can enter in the nuclear reactor, the cooling tower and all that thing. So this is all about the nuclear, uh, you can say that nuclear power plant. So it is a video will be beneficial to you? Yes, uh, to some extent. Okay, okay. So this is all about for today's lecture regarding the nuclear power plant. Uh, as I have already told you that uh, this is the third power plant that we will discuss. Now we are left with only the one power plant and that is called as the diesel power plant that we will discuss in our next lecture. Okay, fine. So 